I'm gonna start this video by saying something that on the surface sounds like the ramblings of a complete madman. AM2 are the greatest studio in the entire history of gaming, far greater than even the top tier of modern studios which are found within the PlayStation Studio family. And AM2's leader, Yu Suzuki, has done more for gaming than Shigeru Miyamoto. The following video will justify this seemingly insane idea. Hello sailors, this is the Dodgy Kebab, and if you came here because you saw the promo music video I made for this, that bit's at the end. Anyway, for all you Fortnite kiddies whose first console was the PlayStation 2, let's do a quick crash course into who are AM2. In 1983, Yu Suzuki joined Sega as a programmer and quickly impressed the company in his first year with his very first title, Champion Boxer on the SG-1000. Soon after, he was promoted to project leader and began and creating arcade games, the first being Hang On. Suzuki not only designed the game, but also helped create the Super Scalar arcade hardware, which had the ability to smoothly scale the size of the game sprites to give the illusion of 3D in Hang On. Well, I say 3D, but remember this was 1985. Hang On was a runaway success. From here, Suzuki created a string of successful games with his team, who eventually gained their own building to work in and their own name, Sega AM2. From 1985, AM2 would spend the next 20 years creating games like Afterburner, Outrun, Virtua Fighter, Daytona USA and Shenmue. As well as Suzuki, other notable staff members include this guy right here who would go on to create the legendary Yakuza series of games. So that's who AM2 is, but why am I jizzing so hard over this studio? Well, people point to Shigeru Miyamoto for reinventing the platform genre in Super Mario 64 or Naughty Dog for creating worldwide smash hits, maybe a smaller studio for creating a cult classic, or even someone like id Software for producing titles that were absolutely cutting edge for its time. And look, these are all great studios and people, but AM2 did all of these things and more. They reinvented multiple genres, they created huge worldwide hits, they created cult classics and games that were cutting edge for their time. As well as all those things, they helped create and shape the entire modern gaming landscape. Now, I've just made a lot of claims that might seem crazier than a person buying an Xbox over a PlayStation. So like D-Generation X, let's break it down. AM2 took what Sega had done with the Fonz game and what Namco did with Pole Position and drove sprite scaling technology forward with the super scalar hardware they created. With this, they made games that took the whole world by storm. Hang On, Outrun, Afterburner, Power Drift. Many of these were copied in some way in following years by rival companies, but it was AM2 that created this technology standard. To do it once is one thing, but then to do it again is absolutely unheard of. But that's what happened with the release of AM2's Model 1 polygon pushing hardware. Games like 1989's Hard Driving by Atari or Namco's Starblade in 1991 were polygon based arcade games, but they didn't convince the industry that polygon based 3D visuals were anything more than a novelty. AM2 produced their Model 1 hardware for the showpiece software Virtua Racing to convince the world that 3D visuals could be achieved with this method and it was more than a one-off. This idea was cemented once AM2 unleashed Virtua Fighter into the arcades in 1993. Remember, this was a time when Street Fighter 2 ruled the world yet here was AM2 releasing a game that was light years ahead of everyone else, including the current market leader. This combination of Virtua Racing and Virtua Fighter changed the gaming industry to what we know today. Instead of 2D sprite-based games, we now had 3D games made out of geometric shapes that could be viewed at any angle. This is the foundation that the entire gaming industry is based on in the modern age, and it's AM2 that managed to create this transition. Okay, sure, these days gaming characters don't look like they were created with a potato peeler, but the foundation of using geometric shapes rather than 2D sprites can be traced back to the first AM2 games in the Virtu 
Adventure series. AM2 were the ones to create the technology that made 3D games something more than just a novelty idea. In fact, Virtua Fighter directly inspired Sony when they were creating the first PlayStation console, and you don't get much more industry defining than that. So just remember, every game that you play now, be it a copy-paste Call of Duty game, a high-production Sony masterpiece, or even a low-tier Xbox Game Pass title, all these three-dimensional games have AM2 to thank for for pushing the polygon technology into the mainstream in the first place. Sometimes a studio or designer will be hoisted to the status of legend because they reinvented or redefined an entire genre of games. Mario 64 springs to mind when studios were trying to figure out how to bring the popular platforming genre into 3D. We got such disasters as Bug on the Sega Saturn and Bubsy 3D on the PlayStation. Then Mario 64 comes along and sets a new standard on how 3D platform games should be done. Obviously the team behind Gex didn't get the memo but you get the idea. AM2 did for one-on-one -on -one fighting games what Mario 64 did for platformers and totally reinvented the genre. Literally every single fighting game before Virtua Fighter was a sprite based title like Street Fighter 2 but then AM2 rolls around with Virtua Fighter in 1993 and showed the world for the first time a fully 3D fighting game and what it would look like. Remember at this point there was almost no 3D dimensional polygon based games anyway. You had AM2's Virtua Racing, which in itself redefined the entire genre of racing games. But anything outside of that was just experimental titles which didn't really go anywhere, like Namco's Sim Drive. But Virtua Fighter spawned a new wave of polygon based fighting games like Tekken, Dead or Alive, and Toshinden. Then later, even fighting games that were 2D transitioned to 3D like Street Fighter and King of Fighters. But Virtua Fighter was the first. It's all well and good being a studio that creates new technology and even uses that to redefine gaming genres, but without worldwide hits of your own, you wouldn't be classed as a legendary studio. AM2 didn't just create one or maybe two games that saw great success, they have a back catalogue that is unbelievable. So let's just run through the biggest. Hang On, Space Harrier, Outrun, Afterburner, five mainline Virtua Fighter games, Daytona USA, Virtua Cop, Border Break, Hatsune Miku, Project Diva. That's their top tier. The games that sold in huge numbers and brought Sega in truckloads of money. Then you have the games that are still successful, but not to the same gigantic standards as their top tier games. Games like Power Drift, Dynamite Ducks, Desert Tank, Fighting Vipers, Virtua Striker, Scud Race. AM2 pumped out a list of hits that is staggering. Probably the reason why Sega allowed the studio so much freedom to do what they wanted to do, and much of their development work was kept secret even from the higher ups at Sega management. On occasions, Yu Suzuki would not even allow management to enter the AM2 office, while at the same time, Sega higher ups would turn a blind eye to the many AM2 members working until late, leaving the office to go out drinking, stagger back, sleep under their desks, and then wake up the next morning to get back to work. It was this sort of behaviour that earned AM2 a different nickname around Sega who would refer to the studio as 2AM. So as well as pushing gaming tech forward, reinventing genres, AM2 also had a huge blockbuster list of hits too. Having your game sell gangbusters is obviously what you want as a studio, but what if it doesn't sell as well as you'd hoped? Maybe because it was on a console which didn't sell very much compared to the competition? In that scenario, the best thing to happen is that your game becomes a cult classic, as many times a smaller but dedicated fan base will keep the memory of your game alive longer than a game that sold well to the mainstream audience. AM2 have this base covered too, with a little game called Shenmue. This title was 
was way ahead of its time and is largely acknowledged as the first proper open world game and has inspired many other studios since, especially CD Projekt Red, who credited AM2 for inventing the first true open world game. Go where you like, talk to whoever you like, battle with enemies, interact the world and spend ludicrous sums of money on capsule toys. Back in 1999, Shenmue blew away anyone that played it on the Sega Dreamcast, which unfortunately wasn't too many as most people were waiting for the Sony PlayStation 2. Shenmue is a proper cult classic, which is why when Shenmue 3 was announced in 2015, fans lost their minds as they couldn't believe the series was actually making a return. Although less said about Shenmue 3 the better, but at least the anime that was released is good. Earlier, I talked about how AM2 pushed the whole industry forward with its new gaming technology, but they never stopped there as they kept refining the hardware they created to stay ahead of the competition in terms of graphics quality. When Namco released Tekken in 1994, which looked like this, AM2 released Virtua Fighter 2 just one month later, which blew Tekken out of the water. Scud Race was launched in 1996 and showed that AM2 were years ahead of everyone just to get an idea of how far ahead they were, this is Cruising World, also from the arcades from the same year. On PC, in 1996, you had NASCAR Racing 2, as well as Monster Truck Madness. And the most powerful console at the time, the Nintendo 64, offered Mario Kart 64. AM2 weren't just leading the way, they were so far ahead, it was ridiculous. In 1999, if you had a top of the line PC with a brand new 3D graphics card, you could treat yourself to Half-Life Opposing Force, which is playing on screen now. However, at the same time, time AM2 were releasing Shenmue on the Dreamcast which was easily the best looking home video game at the time. AM2 were cutting edge, they had cult classics, they had mainstream mega hits, they pushed tech forward for the whole industry and reinvented various gaming genres. That's why they were the greatest studio that ever existed and between 1985 and 2000 they were untouchable. They were brought down by Sega's near collapse in the early 2000s and not long after studio head Yu Suzuki left Sega. Many of the members after AM2 finished up went off to go and form a new studio within Sega. You may have heard of them, you may have heard of their games but anyway the unforgettable run of AM2 was so special I've decided to end this video with a musical piece which I've put together inspired by their work. Enjoy!
Ready? Go! Uh -huh.